March 8, 2016. We're going to open up the uh, Charlton Board of Health meeting. Uh, members present, uh, myself, Matt Gagner, Chairman. Uh, we have Willie Stevens, Vice Chair, and Nelson Burlingame, Member. Um, we also have um, other members with us today. We have um, up at the table, we have uh, Rob Lemansky from the Water and Sewer Commission. Uh, we have Joe Spiewak from the Water and Sewer Commission. We have Town Administrator, uh, Robin Craver. Uh, and I know there's other selectmen in the uh, audience. Uh, thank you all for coming. I believe uh, uh, Senator Ann Gobi's with us as well. Uh, and I believe there are representatives from our state rep, Peter Durant. So uh, thank you all for attending this meeting. Um, originally, uh, I called this meeting uh, through actually reading in the, the telegram that <clears throat> there were going to be uh, additional uh, wells tested for the uh, Exxon mobile spill on the uh, what we're calling the school loop down Muggett Hill Road and Freeman Road and in, in, uh, that general area. And, uh, I thought it was important that the uh, Board of Health uh, got involved with exactly what's going on in, in this um, new information. So uh, our board reached out to um, ExxonMobil and Kleinfelder, which is their uh, uh, environmental consultant, to see if they could bring us up to speed and uh, give us information as to what's going on, why, why they were doing that, and, and what, was, what was happening. Um, until uh, yesterday, we got a phone call that uh, ExxonMobil would not be uh, attending this meeting, nor would uh, any of their representatives from Kleinfelder. So in, in case somebody, someone's here from that and they'd like to tell me different, I don't believe anybody's here. Um, so for that, I don't have a lot of information uh, for all of you because um, the pros that have it are not here. Um, we do have general information. Basically, uh, what's going on is there's been a, a fuel spill uh, from what uh, ExxonMobil has um, been classified as a potentially responsible party. Um, we believe that there's a plume that may be moving, and we want to know who's affected. Uh, is it safe to drink the water? Is it safe to shower? And all these questions. And so we're trying to get all this information uh, about that. And um, we, we have... Uh, we have uh, 49 people right now on a list of people to get their wells tested. I know it's a work in progress. Some of those wells have been tested, and some of those are on a list to be tested. Um, but again, I was hoping to have uh, the representative Kleinfelder come up, uh, give us some information, bring us up to speed on everything, and, uh, and I don't believe they're there. Um, so I don't know. Yep, certainly. Uh, I don't know, uh, Senator Gobi, if who have some words you could sure. shed light with us? Uh, I'll be happy to come up. Thank you um, for inviting me, and I know Representative Duran. I don't know if Peter, you want to oh. come up too. Um, Sorry, Peter, I didn't see you there earlier. That's, That's right, I'm trying to blend it. Don't worry. Um, but, but thank you, and I know there's a lot of folks here, and there are people outside as well. Uh, first of all, I did want to just mention, unfortunately, I do have to believe Really soon, um, I have a meeting in Ashburnham at 7.30 with the school committee, and so it's going to take me a little bit of a hike to get to Ashburnham. Tyler from my office, Tyler Luann, Tyler, wave your hand. Tyler is here and will be here for the end, till the end of the meeting, so obviously if anything else comes up that I can help you with. Uh, I would first like to say this, you know, um, when I had talked with some of the group going on here, Robin was so great in the, in the boards. Of getting me up to speed on what you what you've been dealing with. I mean, this has been an entire generation, and you've been victimized by a corporation every single day, every day for an entire generation. And it has to stop. It absolutely has to stop. And I know that the ongoing communications that you have, um, whether it that that they're not being truthful with you, and it would seem to me from what I've been reading in the paper, the few things that I've heard. It seems that they have not been. And that is no way for anybody to deal with you. You deserve much more respect than that. And obviously everybody in this room, everybody in this community deserves much more respect than that. So one of the things that we had talked about, and, I, and I'm very glad to follow up with, and Robin, I want to thank you again, is that if there was something that we could do legislatively to maybe put a little bit more bite in some of the laws that currently exist, and working with town council I received a draft, um, well, earlier this, earlier this morning, and then we went back and forth because I had a couple of concerns on things. But we have some language, and hopefully what it will do 
is, if nothing else, <laughs> it, it, it should make Exxon perk up a little bit. And so the idea is that Peter and I will, will be able to offer this uh, and Paul Frost as part of an amendment to the budget to get some notice. And again, it's basically to hold their feet to the fire a little bit more as, as we're moving forward. So I will do whatever I can to help you out because you, it, it's ridiculous. And there was a sign out there, I don't know who would add it. Somebody had a sign about, um, was it two days of interest or something? Who had that sign out there? Someone had a sign that basically said, their profits, and it's absolutely true. You know, if you could just get their interest from their profits for a month, we'd take care of all of this issue. That's not right. It's not right. So I'm very pleased to stand with you to do whatever I can to be helpful and to do whatever the, ever this board wants me to do. Anything that you want, Thank you. I'm with you. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, there's not much more to say. Look, I, I think um, Senator Gobi hit the nail on the head. It, you know, we have to focus on the results uh, of getting water to the t to the affected residents, getting the town uh, on the piping system, and, and get this thing solved. It's not something that we can wait any longer on. Uh, I know the negotiation has been going on a while, and I know a lot of these things are taking place. Uh, and, and and you're right. I mean, I think uh, Senator Gobi was right when she said, you know. It's not much for a company like Exxon to put these pipes in and do that work. This is a drop in the bucket for them. Um, so I think we need to focus on those results. I think we need to get these things moving. And, um, and again, I, I'm, I'm like Senator Gobi, uh, like Representative Frost, we're all here to help in any way that we can. I'm here to answer any questions that we can, ha that we can answer for you and, um, and keep this process moving forward. But we do need to, do, to move it uh, sooner rather than later. And if that means that uh, filing some legislation in the budget as an outside section works, uh, I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, I, I think we need to, you know, we have to see what that's going to look like, what it's going to entail, how that's going to come about. But uh, anything that we can do to actually make this move forward, we have to do, and we have to do it forthwith. So, um, but like I said, I'm here to answer any questions and, um, and help you out in any way we can. We're here for you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, before I open it up for questions, I just wanted to add, uh, Robin, would you like to comment on it, or would Water Sewer would like to make a comment um, before we open it up for discussion? Joe, Rob. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, Robert Lemansky, uh, wa Child Water and Sewer. Uh, for me as a commissioner, when I came on in 2000, I believe it was 2008, it was when uh, the town of Charlton, uh, both the selectmen and the water sewer, uh, signed our first agreement with ExxonMobil. And that was um, for the improvement of the water line that was to, uh, to take place on Stafford Street, Northside Road, at Route 20, and that connection. And when we did that, uh, included in that agreement was a, was a release that, that Exxon refers to. But that release was a partial release and was also a timely release that it lasted for five years. So what that meant is, or what that means to us is, is that the, the original spills that took place at 6W starting back in the 50s and 60s, that site, as far as we're concerned, is a contributing factor to the plume that we're t we are currently dealing with that plume that has moved south, crossed Route 20, and then there was another uh, I issue with Exxon, which was uh, at the mountains, which in our eyes, which is a much smaller spill, in fact, minuscule compared to all the documents that we have on 6W. And since then, is, uh, with all the testing, is, uh, what, what has come up is, is that we still have this MTBE in our aquifer. There's the ground, then there's the ledge. Within the ledge is, the, is where your artesian wells end up uh, drawing their water from. And this is the area to where this uh, contaminant has gone into and it spreads in, in, in a radical way. So um, we've been dealing with ExxonMobil and I, I guess the short of it is, is this. They have identified that yes, they have a responsibility and yes, they said, fine, finally, we'll do the school loop. 
which is, is, is run the pipes all the way, way around and service that with water. But, pri but there was a contingency on that. Before we could do the school loop, they said to us, you've got to make sure that you have a supply of water. So that's when we had to diligently work uh, with Southbridge to obtain that supply of water. And also, not only did we have to uh, obtain that supply of water, we also needed to make sure that the quality of that water was going to be sufficient so that when we turned the water on, uh, we would be able to, to depend on the use of the customers to make sure that water stayed fresh. And that's why we've done additional negotiations and additional work in extending the water line to include Masonic Home, which uses 40,000 gallons of water a day. So we ended up getting that done. And we didn't get that done, when I say get it done, we didn't complete all of those negotiations and all those agreements until April 2015. So when you hear, oh, in 2012 they made an offer and we've just been playing games with them, no, not at all. That, that's, that's, that's a total fallacy, is, is because we've been told time and time again that when you have the supply of water and when you can make a deal that we can count on the fact that when we make this investment that the water is going to be there and we can turn it on, uh, then and only then will we sit down and have a discussion. And we've always been told is, is that when we sit down with the negotiators from ExxonMobil, that they will negotiate a deal, then they got to bring it upstairs for it to get okayed. Because uh, the, their, their managers have got to okay whatever deal that they pound out. So they told, told us that that's got to happen. And also they told us is, this is we're only going to get one bite of the apple, so make sure that you have everything included in there because there's not going to be any more money. And we had told them at the same time is, is through many discussions with, with the people here in Charlton uh, is, is look, uh, and I remember the words of, of, of Jerry Russell on, on the town floor, it's, it, who lives on Old Worcester Road. He says, we didn't do anything wrong. And, and so now we have this, this contaminant. So now what you're going to do is, is bring us water. And then, then once you bring us water, you want us to pay a betterment fee and you want, to, you, you want us to pay for the connection fee. And, 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 and like he pointed out, that's not fair. And, and we also had said, said to ExxonMobil, look, we can't go back to town meeting and ask them for one red penny because they're going to say no. And, and, I, and I wouldn't blame the people for saying no because we didn't do anything wrong. And uh, this issue has been going on for a long, long, long time. So uh, as, 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 as we, we've gone along is their engineers have worked with our engineers. They developed cost, uh, cost an analysis. And then they were open and gave us all their information. And now that's closed off. They won't give us any more information. So we have to depend on our own in engineer in order to come up with some estimates of exactly what it's going to cost to do all of this work. And all of this work includes putting in a, an extension line on 169. It includes putting in a line on, on AF Put Putnam Road. And we were, we've been told this by the, the, the water engineers in order to have a viable working uh, water source. So. We've gone back and forth and back and forth. And, and, and the short of all this, it all boils down to money. They, they have agreed, in principle, that they've got an obligation to do the school loop. But they want to try to do it to a point to where they only want to spend X, and that's all. And, and they're saying to us, oh, Charlton's getting, going to get so many more benefits. You're now going to have public water. You're going to be able to have all this business growth. But you know they fail to remember, as 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 a town administrator to told them in, 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 in a very very complete uh, 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 PowerPoint uh, de demonstration when we're in me mediation is is that look we we've lost bi businesses we have people now who don't want to come to our town it, it, it be because of of the fear of this water and, and not not ha having a resolution to it so. Where we are right now, at least in my terms, or at least in my uh, perception, is we're at a point now to where we have, have come up with what we feel is reasonable in order to get this job done as soon as possible. Because it's important to get these lines in as quickly as possible. We have 2,200 children every day at those schools. 
And, uh, and of course, we could go on a tangent and say, fine, we're going to sue them and go to court. Then 10 years later, maybe you come up with a settlement, a settlement similar to what happened down in South Carolina. Then they appeal it. They appeal it for another five years. And by the time they appeal it, it doesn't happen. So, you know, that's not where we want to go. We want to do a settlement. We want to make sure that we don't have to go back to the townspeople and ask them for more dollars because we ended up com coming up short because we didn't negotiate the right deal. And it's not that I believe firmly that there's no greed on our part. What we're trying to do is cover our bases to make sure it's the right deal. Sorry for being so long, but. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Joe, do you, would you like to add to that? I, w I would, Matt, thanks. Um, a couple of things that I'd like to add to that. Um, Mr. Lemansky covered the, the North Side Road situation. Uh, in that, we did sign a release. It was three to five years in length. And for that, we received a half a million dollar settlement from, from ExxonMobil. The current demand from ExxonMobil, and I'm using that name rather than the one that I wrote here, um, which I'll be happy to share with everybody offline. Um, the current demand for a release in order to put the pipes in the ground is that the town will forever and always not have the right to go back after ExxonMobil and sue. So I ask everybody here, when you think about this, if a half a million dollars was worth three to five years, what's forever worth? What number would you put on that? And what number would you put on giving up the rights of us, of our town, to protect ourselves in the future? So when you read in the, from their propaganda machine that, you know, it's the town's fault. I spoke to a residence, a couple of residents tonight, tonight, excuse me, who are recently affected, who said even the Kleinfelder representative is saying you should push your town officials to get this, to agree to this deal because it's, it's the only way this is going to get done. This is the MO of this company. They don't care about us. They don't care about your values in terms of your property. They care more about the value of their brand. They care more about the health of their balance sheet than they do of, <clears throat> excuse me, of your children. And all they're trying to do is divide us. So I encourage you to all stay the course, stay together, use social media to keep up the pressure. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And Matt, uh, and Joe reminded me of this just the other day relative to Northside Road. When ExxonMobil was doing the mitigation in that area, and it was, it was all because um, they were found to be the responsible party for the 6W spill, ExxonMobil paid for the water line to be installed on Northside Road. They paid for the connections to the people on Northside Road. They paid for any of the well decommissionings. De uh, and they also paid for the betterments of those pe people. So these are the things that we're, we want to make sure are in place for the school loop. And it's already what they've done over on Northside Road. So we're not asking them any, uh, anything different than what they've already done. And, uh, and Joe, thank you for pointing that out the other day. It, it, it just made it so, so more obvious that, well, we, it was okay, you know, four years ago, but it's not okay now because they want to save money. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. <coughs> um, I'll be with you. Go ahead, Robin. <laughs> John wants to say something, but go ahead, Robin. Um, yes, I, I want to acknowledge, first I want to acknowledge Senator Goldby and um, Representative Durant and thank them for coming and supporting um, the townspeople, this is very important to um, all of us. I also want to thank the Board of Health for having this meeting. I know it wasn't your intention to have um, que questions to come up to you that you don't can't answer, and we certainly hadn't planned on this being a uh, mediation type thing or, or talking about um, what we've gone through and trying to get Exxon to do the right thing. Um, at the same time, I really do appreciate the concerns and frustrations of the Water Sewer Commission, um, especially because the two Water Sewer Commissioners who were sitting up here has been in the negotiation and bargaining team, and I can tell you they are extremely frustrated. Um, Mr. Lemansky mentioned some propaganda that Exxon has put out. Um, that is true. Um, they actually had a handout that they wanted to give tonight, and we found it inappropriate because we know that you were 
you know, very committed to getting these people information about their homes and their wills and keeping the focus on them. So um, I've proposed to the Board of Selectmen that we take the time at the next Board of Selectmen meeting to actually go through the history, the, um, the negotiations, where we are with the negotiations, but not um, kind of cloud up this because I think there's people out here that want some answers as um, <coughs> far as their wells. So I just wanted to say that and, um, you know, I can, only, I can tell you I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here asking questions. Um, the Board of Health, the Water Sewer Commission, the Board of Selectmen have really been working hard on your behalf um, and they are fighting for you. So um, hopefully we'll be able to answer some of the questions. I <coughs> but um, I also want to say that um, there are numbers for Exxon to call and I would recommend people calling too and letting them know, one, that you're disappointed they didn't come. I mean, for them to be a no-show to me, and I have to say that I completely agree with Senator Gobi that um, that's just disrespectful. They should be here tonight. And I am um, highly disappointed that they couldn't come. In comparison, um, some of you have been involved with uh, Casella. Um, they came. They know that it's uncomfortable to listen to people talk about what's, what's happening and to grill them. But you know what? They came. And Exxon is a no-show. Exxon has said, we don't think it's important enough to be here and listen to your concerns. And uh, that's just not a good corporate partner and or a good neighbor. <coughs> so um, I'm really disappointed. And we will continue a conversation about the mediation and what's going on and give you more information at the next board meeting. Thank you. I'd like to go with, um, sorry, Rick, go ahead. John, sorry, he's chair. <laughs> Come, come both of you, yeah, both of you come up. For those of you that don't know these guys, it's our uh, selectman, it's Chairman Rick Swenson, and um, John, are you vice chair? Mem no, no, member? I'm, just, I'm just here. Pull the chair. These guys are the town of Charlton selectmen, so. Rick, I'll start with you, please. Thanks, Matt. Just, just, just a couple of things, if I could, to reiterate some of the things that have been said here already. The... Um, the negotiating team that's been dealing with Exxon Mobil has been Mr. Lemansky, Mr. Spiewak, John, and myself with the, with our town administrator, Robin Craver. And uh, I'm, I'm 10 years into this. And ex what has got this moving and gotten us to this point, honestly, is, is the people in this room. Um, as was said earlier by someone, Exxon Mobil doesn't care about Charlton as a town. They don't care about you as residents. They don't care about your kids. What they care about is their brand. And when it got out that there were hits at the school and you folks started carrying signs and coming to the meetings, all of a sudden our phone's ringing off the hook from ExxonMobil wanting to talk. As you've probably seen, they put out <clears throat> some propaganda in both the Stonebridge Press, Southbridge News, Charlton Villager, as well as the Telegram and Gazette uh, regarding how they've been good partners trying to work with the town. And that they proposed uh, that they offered to build this, what was come to be known as the school loop, this six mile loop of, of water. Um, <clears throat> if I had a dollar for every time over the last year I've heard someone from ExxonMobil say, remember, this is a proposal, not an offer. This is not an offer, it's a proposal. We probably could have built out the school loop by now. They have been adamant in saying that this is not an offer, it's a proposal. Which, you know, when you're sitting in a room full of lawyers, you have to be very careful in the semantics um, of those words. Uh, I can tell you plainly uh, from my own experience, we did at one point, the five of us went into Boston for mediation, which just without disclosing things we shouldn't disclose, just went nowhere. Went absolutely nowhere. Um, they came in, <clears throat> we came in here, they came in here, and by the end of the day we were here, they were maybe even there. So it, it absolutely, it was, a, it was a waste of a day for all of us, and it was a waste of what we paid, if you can think of what a negotiator in Boston might get sitting up in one of those tall office buildings looking out over Boston Harbor. Uh, you can probably imagine what they get. Um, but I, I just want to address that, what I've read in the paper, because it just makes my blood boil having gone through this for 10 years. They had not offered us anything. Not offered us anything. They have made proposals. And we, 
as a couple of a couple of the other people tonight have mentioned, our responsibility is to you guys. It's to the residents of this town. And the word that's graded on me through this whole process has been betterments. No one's getting better. No one's getting something that puts you ahead of where you were before all of this has happened. You're being made whole. If your property has been devalued through contamination, getting water running, getting clean potable water and restoring your property, hopefully to somewhat where it was before all this happened as far as property value goes, that's not being better. That's being made whole for damages that were done. And we firmly believe that it's Exxon Mobil's responsibility to put in the water line, pay the betterments, for lack of a better term, and to hook everybody up. So you're back where you were. At the end of the day, you can turn on your faucet and have water that you can drink and shower with and you can bathe each other with. And if they think that's being greedy, I'll live with that. I'll, I'll gladly, I will gladly live with that. Um, I know they came to the Board of Health and said that they want to be good partners and work with the town and provide information and work and answer questions and all of that. You can see where they are tonight. So I'll leave it at that if you want to. And, and, I could go on all night, but I'll, I'll stop yeah, there. And, and as Rick said, uh, I think what you see through their actions tonight, the way that they first, and this is what they do constantly, 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 constantly. They give you a goal here. Then they go here. Then they go here. And, and, and so tonight they were going to come here with their engineer, and I assume they were going to have a representative to protect their brand here tonight also. Um, they're not here. They're not, they're not interested in helping anybody in this community solve the problem that they caused. The problem is their product is in our ground. It's contaminating our citizens' wells, and they are doing absolutely nothing about it. They're putting a filtration system on where the DEP says that they have to, that they have to do it. And do not think that DEP is, is, is not doing anything. They're doing the, the, the state has done uh, as much as they possibly can to, to move these people forward on, on, on cleaning up this mess that they've caused. The real problem is that we're dealing with pros, okay? We're, we're amateurs dealing with these people. Even the, even the legal teams that have gone with other people, that gone you know, against other corporations that have contaminated property or, or, or water systems, they, they tell you their MO is delay, 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 delay. Keep their name out of the news. We're not going to let them keep their name out of the news. We're sick of, we're sick of dealing with these people. You can't get a straight answer from their negotiating team on anything, and you have a, a, a faceless group that's up above the, the negotiating team that you can't talk to at all. And so the people that are making the decisions have absolutely no contact with us whatsoever, and that is ludicrous. That's why they didn't come tonight. They don't want to be here answering people's questions. They don't want to be on the hot seat. And as the town administrator said, Kudos to, uh, to Casella and their engineers and stuff. They might not like sitting here with, listening to people talk about their water, but guess what? They're willing to work with the town and clean up the problem that, 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 that's over in that corner of town. No, they're not. No, they're not. It's delay, 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 just like you said. At least they, but okay. You're not, you don't have a control. Order, please. Okay. Order. So, so John. So you're misspeaking. Don't, please okay. don't. So let, let me let me say this. At least they've come to the meetings, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So not as many That's meetings it. as we've come to. Okay, but they've come to meetings. Where is Mobile Exxon? Not here. They come here looking for something. Okay. They come here looking to get a site assignment. Okay. But you never point come of order. Here to listen. Point of order. So so we'll we'll move on from there. The town had a problem down at the town highway barn. Okay, we corrected that. It was our problem. We corrected it. We had a problem up here at Ford Dresser Hill Road. We corrected that problem. You know what Mobile Exxon's answer to that is? Oh, the contamination from the highway barn is what's common, causing the contamination on Old Worcester Road. You know what DEP said? Guess what? The gas at the highway barn didn't have tame in it, okay, which is an additive. Whose gas had tame in it? Mobile Exxon, okay? 
So that's the type of stuff that we're putting up with that, with that, with that crew. It's, they, they, are, they stink. They're not interested in anybody here. Absolutely. I'm just going to make one last point, if I could, Matt. Thank yes. you. We'll be done. Um, a couple of things that's been, bantied, that's been mentioned by a couple of different people that I'd like to summarize. Um, I've had lots of people come up to me over the years and say, sue them. Sue them. They're responsible. Sue them. There is nothing that we could do to play more into their hand than to sue them. They're hoping we will for the simple reason that they, will, they have more lawyers on retainer than we could ever hope to have. And they will tie us up, as someone said earlier, they will tie us up in court for <coughs> years, if not decades. And then if, a, then if a ruling is made in our favor, they'll just appeal it and drag it on for another year or another decade. They've, they've proven time and time again that they are much more willing to put money into lawyers than they are into fixing the problem. Because if they come into this town or any town and put in a water system or clean up a spill, they're acknowledging some culpability. If they take that same money, invest it in lawyers and put it off and put it off and put it off, they're not admitting any guilt or any culpability whatsoever. So the biggest, I think, and we've had conversations for hours and hours and hours about these topics. Our, our best shot is to keep up this kind of pressure, the public pressure. They care about their brand. They care about the ExxonMobil brand. And if we can keep pressure on them, that's more motivation for them to settle this and just make this go away. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. John, I know uh, you mentioned another contamination on the other side of town. And uh, I'd just like to point out, um, as you could tell, it was you know, uh, controversial, and uh, this board has a lot of unanswered questions with what's going on on the other side of town as well, so we're, we're still working on that. I just, I just want to point that out to you, John. So, Can I uh, add a piece? Yes, Robin. Um, just to, to piggyback on what Mr. Swenson, uh, Selectman Swenson said, you know, the last thing we do want to do is litigation, but the, uh, the truth is, if we need to, we can. Um, we have had been contacted by some attorneys that are willing to take this on because they believe in the cause and they're basically <coughs> saying, Charlton, you're, you know, you're being damaged and Exxon should be made to pay. So we're hoping that they come <coughs> forward now because it's the fastest fix. But um, we do have a case, as you probably saw, we had made contact with Erin Brockovich. We got her attention. So there's, there are things to do the next steps. Nobody wants to do it because, it, as Mr. Swenson said, it takes years. But um, I think that the elected officials are going to do everything they can to protect the aquifer here, protect your interests, and to make sure that you're made whole. Thank you, Robin. Um, so what I'd like to do now is um, I'm going to open it up to the audience. Uh, if anybody has a comment, I'd like to try to limit the comments. Um, when I call on you, if you could just state your name and your address, so uh, it would be helpful for us. And uh, I'm going to start with Kathleen. Do you want to also go to the schools and the counselors? Oh, yes, I will, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this hasn't reached the level of Flint, Michigan, yet. Uh, my name is Kathleen Walker. I live on Baker Pond Road. I've been in Charlton for 20 years. I was on the Board of Selectmen for 12 years, and I think for probably at least 11 of those 12 years, we were dealing with ExxonMobil and with the um, problems, as Mr. Lemansky clearly laid out. I have a somewhat radical suggestion and um, I'm very happy that people are getting mad because I've been mad for years about this very issue. And I think, I think really <clears throat> the only people with any power to do anything about it is the Board of Health. I was on a Board of Health in Burlington, Massachusetts for nine years and during that time we had a school that was contaminated with asbestos. Now, the level of asbestos was low. It didn't reach the EPA standards of dangerousness. However, people were so upset. And so 
terribly um, frustrated by the fact that their children were going to school there, that the Board of Health in Burlington, there were three of us, we decided to close down that school and have the asbestos removed. We did have the power to do that. The, the schools in Charlton are affected, maybe to a minimal level. However, they are affected. I have two grandchildren in those schools. I don't want them going to school there if the water isn't drinkable and isn't clearly, even the minuscule amount of it doesn't have uh, MTBE in it. And so I think the Board of Health should take under consideration and look into the possibility of closing down the Heritage School in the Marshall, in the, it was Marshall Simons in Burlington, in the uh, Charlton Middle School uh, until this situation is rectified. I think at the very least that will get the attention of ExxonMobil. The other thing I wanted to say is that when ExxonMobil sent this town away to get water from Southbridge, and that process took three years, they could have been laying the pipes down the loop. They really could have been, because we were going to get that water from Southbridge. It was just a question of negotiating with them. I don't think we should be negotiating with ExxonMobil. I don't think we should be mediating with ExxonMobil. I don't think we should be appropriating money from town meeting to pay for that mediation. I think ExxonMobil should be required and should be demanded through whatever means possible to come into this town and fix things immediately. Thanks. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, <laughs> next, I'd, next, I'd like to hear from our superintendent, uh, Mr. Greg Desso. Just speak up, and that's fine. Okay, good evening, everybody. I'm Greg Desto. I'm the superintendent of schools in Dublin Charlton. Uh, I guess equally important to that, I'm a resident of the town, proud resident for 16 years, raising my kids here, and my own son goes to the Heritage School. Um, so I, I guess, you know, I don't have a script. I'm going to speak from the heart. I'm going to try to let you know where we stand as a school system right now, and then, um, you know, sort of like how we can partner with the town as we go forward, because I... It's been mentioned twice tonight, the power uh, of the schools and the power of our children. Um, we've got every, every day, we have approximately 1,500 people, most of them young people between the ages of 7 and 14 at that site, all right? We've got people using the buildings on the weekends. Some of you may be using the buildings on the weekends and evenings. So it's not an exaggeration to say that we've got 2,500 to 3,000 people going through those doors on any given week. We, uh, as a school system, we do a lot. We spend tens of hours trying to prepare for safety issues that may or may not ever happen. We work with Chief Pervier, he's been great to us uh, in just trying to be proactive as much as we can. Many of those situations, thankfully, don't happen, but we're prepared for them. This is a situation, as I look at it, where we stand right now, is that we have not had any detection of MTBE in our school since 2011 at Charlton Middle School and 2008 at Heritage School. So the water is clean right now. But unlike a lot of the things that I work with Chief Pervier to prepare for, we know this one's coming. I don't think there's any question that we know this safety issue is coming. And so with that in mind, and those 1,500 people a day going through those schools, most of them kids who we all love, um, you know, we really passionately, as a school district, and I'm here with Mrs. Antossi, and Mr. Chalk's out here somewhere from the school committee as well. We, uh, we stand with the town, and we want to do anything we can to help out. I, I don't know if there's very many people in the, in the town who want that school loop more than I do. Okay, so whatever we can do, uh, if you think there's anything, any leverage we can lend to it, uh, we're worried about our kids. And like I said, right now, we're in a pretty good place, but we know that this issue is coming, and so, uh, you know, we want to do whatever we can to help, and just let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to take a comment. Yes, Karen. Hi, Karen Spiewak, resident of Charlton for over 30 years. I want to thank the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health in the last uh, Selectmen's meeting. Uh, I heard the you can't hear me, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's people at home that want to hear you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Again, Karen Spiewak, live um, Osgood Road in Charlton, been a resident for over 30 years, been very active, former school committee member, um, appreciated the, how, the quick action by the superintendent and the school committee when we went there to propose a policy uh, for your, the quality of the water and, and posting that and getting that information. So thank you, Mr. Desto. I wanted to thank the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Health at the last Board of um, Selectmen's meeting and, and Robin Craver, our, our administrator. We asked you to look into the cancer rates in Charlton because, you know, every time you talk to someone, it's like, oh, I have thyroid cancer, I have bladder cancer, I have this, and you did it. And my understanding is the results came in and that females in this town have a higher cancer rate than the state average and the Mass DP, the Mass Department of Public Health is so concerned they are going to do a comprehensive study that's going to take about six to eight weeks. Am I correct? Yes. All right. So again, thank you. But my question is, I'm bringing it back to this. What if down the road, because taking that a step further, what I had asked is when we get the results and you do an, a correlation or an overlay of where our pollution is in this town and where the cancers are, what if we find out that there is a correlation, then what are we going to do? And that's why we want, to, we want to be able to go back, in my opinion, and hold ExxonMobil accountable if indeed that's what we need to do. And I do believe in other states, I know we don't want to talk about suing, and I know it will take forever, but I believe in New Hampshire, the state stepped in, not, didn't leave it up to the town, and, and helped the town to sue ExxonMobil. So we need, again, and I don't know about all of you, I go to a lot of meetings and I get really frustrated because it's like, we talk and we talk and then we leave. And then, you hear crickets, as my husband would say. What can we do? I'm here to give you a few ideas. I have a contact we can call. I'll, I'll share, I shared this with some of you, but this is more of the someone higher up at ExxonMobil. I'll share that information with you. I know some people already took a picture of it. It's Scott Weibro at ExxonMobil. Other thing, every single person here can do something. Write a letter, change your status on Facebook for a day. ExxonMobil, big cross through it. Every single one of you can do it. That's the pressure the people can put on a big company like that. It, it counts, it matters. And why I'm so passionate about this now, I have a granddaughter. People are like, oh, I thought you were kind of pulling to the back. No, no, never. Not while I live in this town. So again, sorry, really frustrated. But you know, together we can do this. Tweet, hashtag, what, what did I say on Facebook? Come on, who is with me? <laughs> hashtag ExxonMobil, hashtag cowards. Thank you. I would like to just point out, and I appreciate all the comments, um, and as this is a Board of Health meeting, we, the board, or especially myself, would like to try to uh, keep the board in the direction of the public health and safety. Um, as far as the litigation, this board does not get involved in litigation. And um, so the comments are fine, but I'd, I'd like to try and keep the uh, focus of the, of the meeting towards, towards the residents and the residents' questions and, and the everyday questions like, can I drink my water and, and those types of questions that come up or am I going to be affected? Um, so I, I, I appreciate all the comments, but um, somebody from the audience, if they would like to say something, ma'am? My name's Katie Cunningham, and I've lived here most of my life on Old Worcester Road. I've seen this situation go from bad to worse. You can't shower in this water. I've lost hair because of it. I get these big rashes on my arms that burn. They sting, all from this water. That's not a way to live. You can't do laundry. You can't clean. You can't cook. You can't drink it. It's basically cutting off a part of your life that is needed to survive. They deliver this water but it's not enough to bathe in, which is what I have started to do, to grow hair back. I get sores in my mouth all the time from it. My thyroid's off the charts. This is causing health problems and it needs to be addressed. For the kids going through those schools, I went through that school. I wouldn't go back if I knew just drinking the water could affect me so badly. It's gonna hurt somebody someday and something needs to be done before the worst does happen. I'm sick of it. I'm absolutely sick of it. And it needs to be said. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. I'll try to speak from here. Um, I just recently found out we're affected by this. We live on 
I'm lugging it alone. And I'm very upset about it. Can you come forward, please? I know it's a problem, but we are being televised, so the people at home mm -hmm. um, can hear. If you don't mind stating your name and address. Okay. It's Arlie Corday. I live at 12 Muggett Hill Road. Um, we just recently found out we were affected by this. Um, I hadn't really heard too much about it, to be honest, until um, sometime in February. We were tested and we found out we do have a small amount of contamination. I know it's not in comparison to what other people have. But I think it doesn't matter to the person looking at the situation from a health situation or from a property value situation. It's all the same. Um, I'd like to see something done that remediates this. Um, bottled water is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, and it's certainly not going to um, help the overall situation. You can't bathe in bottled water. Um, I have a granddaughter that I take care of one or two days a week. It makes me sick to think that I have been feeding her water from what I th believe to be a perfectly safe well that was recently tested for everything but these kinds of additives, and, and it was perfectly fine. So I feel uh, very upset about this. My husband and I are recently retired. We need the full value of our home in order to be comfortable and not be be holding to anyone for our livelihood for as long as we may live. This doesn't seem like a very good move to me to find out that you have this situation. Um, I'd also just like to add that the, the map that I saw of the piping system doesn't include our part of the town. It kind of goes behind on Freeman Road. We're right on Muggett Hill Road. So I would like to make it uh, an, uh, an attempt to put forward that um, if any piping goes in, it should go to anyone that has any contamination because big or small, it's, it's a plume that's moving and it's unreliable as far as what may happen in the future. So I, I wouldn't go by, oh, well, she only has a little bit, so we shouldn't, um, we shouldn't be worried about that because we've lived here for 16 years, almost 17 years, and probably we'll live, if we're so lucky, live here 16 or 17 more. So thank you. Thank you. Can I say something? Yes, Robin, please. Um, just, just to follow up with where the plume is, um, DEP has required them, as you know, many of you have gotten the letters, DEP has required Exxon to find out exactly where this plume has gone and what the edges are and where it would be moving. Um, and at this point, um, DEP has set aside almost 50 um, sites to be tested. We've had a couple of people contact us and we've forwarded their names to DEP and requested that they also be tested because they were close and they weren't chosen. Um, DEP has also added those onto the testing. I think we had about four houses. So if you're in the area and you're not being tested, please let us know because we'll forward that up and we'll get you the information who to contact with DEP. If you have had hits and you are outside where the loop is actually <coughs> supposed to go, we need to know that because um, I think that the woman who just spoke is absolutely correct. I think the Water Sewer Department and the Board of Selectmen and Board of Health need to be doing, being very diligent about making sure that we've got public water to all of where that potential plume is going. Thank you, Robin. Matt, if I may add something. Yes, um, I did speak to this resident, the residents before the meeting. Um, and, and again, it all comes back to money. You know, part of the proposed solution is uh, a choice of you can go old Mugged Hill or Mugged Hill from Exxon Mobil, but we're, they weren't, they didn't want to pay for both. Um, and you know, clearly we've expressed our concern about that. And clearly now you can see why. The fact is that you need both. We don't know where this plume's going to go in the future. Um, and we will make sure that we include that in our ridiculous demands. Thank you, Joe. Are there any other comments? Anybody like to say something on this? Um, John Rose, I've been in this town for about 11 years now on Freeman Road, and I'm kind of curious, is there any strategic plan of water testing so we know and understand ourselves where that plume is going? So, in Rob or Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. So basically, um, what DEP has done was they went out and they did a uh, about 45 houses. I see the list has grown. There's, they've added a couple to it. 
Um, but they go out, if they find a detection, typically they're going to go out an additional 500 feet from that point. So when they get to a point where there's no detection and there's, they're 500 feet from the, the last detection, that's it. At a certain point, DEP may say, hey, it's time to do another series of testing and, and whatnot. And I'm under the impression that's what's going on with this latest uh, round of testing. DEP said, it's time to do another round. It's been a while. Um, and so we have uh, 49 houses right here. I think a big part of it may be as to what the results of these tests are, because if we start getting hits or J hits or whatnot on, on this whole list, uh, we may see this whole area to expand, and yet it may start going down Freeman Road or, or Bond Road or wherever it may be. Well, I'm thinking more of a proactive plan, maybe, that uh, maybe we start talking to people within 1,000 feet or 2,000 feet from the known plume to start getting their water tested right away for this, these particular contaminants so we can catch these things before the people start drinking the water, before they know they have the problem. That would be... Doing diligence, I, I would think. Mm -hmm. um, even if it's through mail, even if it's, and the other part would be is the reporting it back to so some sort of central source so we have that document, so we know what's going on. Um, plumes disintegrate, we know over time, but the problem here is we don't know where it's going, and the geology of this land, with all the ledge, makes it incredibly hard to figure out what's going to go next. So um, I'm just recommending that we look at a more proactive plan. So when we go against Exxon, we have some real evidence that we can hammer them home. Mm -hmm. And also why we need to look at futures. Yeah. I, I agree with you, and thank you for those points. Um, just kind of shooting from the hip, a big part of that is, is the financing and, and how do we do that. These, these tests are re relatively expensive. Um, to go out and, and to do a test like that, I mean, it could, it could be, you know, north $800, $1,000. I think I'm in the range of, of some of the tests. And that may not be for everything, but certain, the MBT or this team or whatnot. Um, so it really comes down to who's going to pay for it and how do we have the funding to do that and, and where do we do that, you know. Um, as homeowners, um, you know, if you can afford it and you're there and your kids are there, I don't think it's a bad idea to do it. Then you know what you have, but ultimately it comes down to money. So um, thank you for that. Um, Diane? Hi, Diane Dabrowski, 31 Main Street, right next door. I've been here 51 years in town, grew up across the street. Um, when I heard the plume was expanding from the south, from the north to the south, going right by my house, and I wasn't on the list to be tested, I went to see Robin. Robin told me that since the town line goes by my house, the water line, Exxon is not going to pay for testing. So I did take it upon myself, and I tried to get some of my neighbors to do testing with me. I have um, dovetail home inspections, charged me $150 <laughs> to do the complete, it's called volatile organic compounds. It includes everything from benzene, methylphenol date, and um, I found that I had tulene now in my well. In 2014, when I bought the house, there was no tulene. Now I have tulene. And someone mentioned Tame. Was that a product of Exxon or the town barn? Byproduct Exxon. that was Exxon is is the T in Tame Tulene. I am not a. I could not answer okay. that myself. So, um, when I heard that Exxon would not pay for testing when it's obviously gone right through Main Street, I thought it was important to let people know that just because the water line goes by, you might not be tied in. I don't want to have to pay for water if what I thought was good water was free. So I think they need to expand the testing to also include people that might not be tied into town water. And like you said, $150, they can ask me for this man's name, and you can get the testing done for yourself. I think it's important to know instead of waiting for Exxon to say, oh, shoot, we should have tested that, that home. And thank you for that, because that seems like a very good price, because I've spoken to very, a few uh, environmental engineers and the price seems to be, you know, north of that. So 
if you, that's that's a great great right there if you attorney can. fantasy told me he found someone to do it for thirty dollars but i don't think that was this <laughs> complete volatile organic mm -hmm. compound result yeah so it so was if you can give that information to yeah, us after, um, after or now i've got a copy and is people can contact the board of health office is that okay yeah, yeah. Mr. Chair? yes thank you and thank you for that. Are there uh, any other questions related to uh, Exxon, sir? Uh, no, I got questions. We're going to, uh, after we do the Exxon discussion, we're going to move over to the Casella. So, um, Exxon, Mr. Testing company and the phone number for Absolutely. Yeah, Mr. Hartwig. I would just confirm that the 150 is also what I paid about eight months ago because we were concerned, and so far it's okay, but... Um, I don't remember the name of the company, but I know where they are. <laughs> it's very close by. Okay. Do you want me to Thank you. rename this so they know what this one is right now? You can rename that. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. So we're not endorsing it. The, the town cannot endorse um, vendors, but we can tell you um, who Diane was, just provided us the information from, which is Microbac, M-I-C-R-O-B-A-C. They're out of Dayville, Connecticut. And their phone number is 860-774-6814. And this information will be at the Board of Health if anyone wants to call tomorrow. And I think it's important, uh, if anybody is calling the water companies, to specifically let them know your issues and that we're dealing with you know, uh, fuel and contaminants and MBTE and, and TAME and all this. Um, because I know the more you test, the more money it is. Um, you know, talking about this 1,4-dioxane and all these things. It's a whole nother round of testing and whatnot. So you, you want to be specific to let them know your concerns. So, uh, Rick. Just one last thing, Matt, if I could. Yeah. Um, just to offer a little bit more perspective on this, the state has been planning to resurface Route 169 all the way from Southbridge up into Charlton. And they came to us and said, we know you're having some water issues. Part of this whole process is going to be to put in a larger water main along 169 because we get to get more volume of water up to Charlton. And in one of our meetings with Exxon Mobil, in trying to bargain in good faith, we said to them, if you would like, while the road is open, while the state is ready to repave it, you can put in the new water line. Save you having to dig the roads, having to do all of that. It would have saved Exxon Mobil about a half a million dollars. They said, no thanks. Um, and the last thing I'd like to say is Mr. and Mrs. Spiewak have both said tonight, as some other people have said, please keep this up. This is absolutely the most powerful tool that we have to get them to negotiate and to get them to move and, and to get them to the table. So thank you all for coming out tonight, and please do keep this up. Thank you. Thank you. Are there uh, any more discussions with ExxonMobil? Karen? Just one comment. I wonder if a water company out there would provide a discount if there were multiple families looking to have the water tested. It's, it's worth asking, I think, when you call. Um, and you probably can get a list going. So, you know, there's got to be someone out there willing to do that. Not everyone can afford the $150. We know that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, just a comment. Is um, through the... Uh, Water and Sewer Commission, I've heard some, some kickback by, um, by Kleinfelder. Kleinfelder is saying they're having a difficult time with some of the people as far as getting permission to come in and do the water test. And we encourage uh, that you do cooperate with Kleinfelder and, and uh, allow them to test your water. And also, is if you do happen to have a POET system, that's a system that uh, ExxonMobil has supplied to quite a few homes here in town, is they will service, uh, in fact, they do follow up and service those filters every six months. And I've already heard that there's some people, or at least one individual, who won't let them change their filter. Well, that's dangerous. You really, really need to have these things serviced. So if you have one or if you have a neighbor who has one, encourage them. That <coughs> they need to take advantage of that service and keep that up to date. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any more comments concerning ExxonMobil? 
If not, we're going to uh, we're going to move on to our next discussion, which will be the uh, Casella landfill. Do you want to take a five-minute we'll recess? Minute yeah, we'll take a uh, we'll take a two-minute, uh, two to five-minute break here, at seven o'clock, and we'll reconvene. Thank you all for coming. Discussion last time about uh, the uh, the IR the IRP uh, changing on the uh, IRA changing on us where some of the residents uh, thought that they were going to be tested and then they decided to uh, test in different areas and whatnot and uh, so we brought that to their attention to ask them what was going on with that and basically um, what they did was the uh, the potentially responsible party. Uh, submitted uh, in a second immediate response action status report to DEP uh, on February 22nd. So uh, originally they had put this report out saying that we were going to do this, this, and this, and as this thing was unfolding, we were realizing they weren't really following what they said they were going to do. Um, so they've uh, revised that and it's been submitted to DEP. I have not seen a response from DEP uh, if it was accepted or approved, but. Um, that's the update with that. Um, there was a, a system um, put in, a treatment system put in at 81H Foot Road, uh, similar to the one at 65. Um, I'll just read this bullet point here. It says, the J detection round one appears to be completed. The uh, non-specified responsible party or uh, potentially responsible party sampled or resampled 23 homes in late December 2015 and early January 2016. Another 18 homes were sampled or resampled on January uh, 25th and 22nd. Based on this sampling, seven homes with J-qualified detections of 1,4-dioxane and or VOCs are either receiving bottled water or will be sampled monthly. Um, and these seven these seven homes are uh, concerning H Foot Road, numbers 58, 74, 85, and um, 53, 72, and 73 H Foot Road, and 148 Barry Corner Road. Um, it says here, bullet point, that it appears that the recent IRA status report has an error regarding property addresses 148 and 149 Barry Corner Road. CMG has asked for the clarification of this issue and has not uh, received a response yet. Um, I'll just read the rest of these bullet reports. Uh, the non-specified responsible party has scheduled 51 homes for sampling in April. Um, CMG, which is our uh, environmental consultant, will request timely reporting of the results to those residents and to the Board of Health. Uh, next point, the IRA report notes that a revised, more comprehensive project-specified standard operating procedure for residential well sampling will be provided before the April sampling event. CMG has requested a copy of this prior to the sampling uh, event. Finally, the last point from Gary says the recent report does not include new data from wells located on the landfill property since these since this data were not available uh, other than limited data from the new well um, MW 110 BR which had a confirmed detection of uh, PCE at one pot per billion apparently PCE has not been detected in the landfill wells in the past the CMG has not confirmed this yet uh, CMG has asked for the data from these new wells in the 933 uh, foot irrigation well once available so that's discussing that last well that um, Casella said they found it was a deep well, 933 feet deep. And it's basically saying that they, don't, they do not have any uh, of the data from that well yet. Um, does anybody uh, have any questions regarding uh, anything? Steve? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Steve Coleman, 150 Berry Corner Road. Matt, if you can, can you clarify 148, 149 Berry Corner Road, what the report said? Yeah. So. I'm going to repeat what it says, and basically it says, it appears that the recent IRA status report has an error regarding property addresses 148 and 149 Berry Corner Road. 
CMG has asked for clarification on this issue and has not received a response yet. Okay. So if I heard you correctly before, you said that it was 148 on the J-hit list? Um, J-hit, I'll, I'll repeat that for you. It says the, the J-detection round appears to be completed. The uh, responsible part, the non-specified responsible party uh, resampled 23 homes late December 2015 and January 2016. Another 18 homes were sampled or resampled on January 22nd and 20, uh, tw January 25th, 2016. Based on the sampling, seven homes with J-qualified detections of 1,4-dioxane and or VOCs are either receiving bottled water. These are homes H Foot Road. Um, and then it says uh, 5874 85 H Foot Road, or will be sampled monthly 53 72 73 H Foot Road and 148 Berry Corner Road. Okay, so 148 Berry Corner Road is, is on the list to be sampled because there was no J qualifier. Correct. Okay, all right. I, I thought you said that they were on the bottled water list with a J qualifier the first time you read it, so that, that's why I was asking for the clarification. Based on this sampling, seven homes with J qualified detections of 1,4 dioxane. So it, it says it is. So one, okay, so I guess that's my clarification. So 148 Berry Corner is on, has a J qualifier. One, two, three. But then on the next, the, the next thing you read with 148 and 149, it said that there was confusion. So confusion. Sure. There was some confusion. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're still not 100% sure whether 148 has the J qualifier. I'm not sure when they're talking about the confusion. Right, what If that it's the J is. hit or if it was something right. else. But based on what I'm reading right here, um, 148 Berry Corner Road was one of the seven homes with J qualified detections. Okay, and 149 was not? It's not on the list, so it's, it's not it's discuss not 149. Okay. However, next bullet point right there, it says, it appears that the recent IRA status report has an error regarding 148 and 149. And again, just, I know you said, but just to clarify, they haven't said when that error would be rectified or they haven't said what the, what the solution is, whether could they're going to resample or not. Could be both do or both don't. You know, right. Could be either way, I guess. It's okay. just broad and it says, have, have not received the response yet. Okay. I can tell you. We'll I, find out. Yeah, we'll find out. I can tell you because I know you're very close to that. That I uh, spoke with one of your new neighbors, uh, 151, and mm -hmm. um, they have not been tested yet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just been thrown out there now to get water tested. I spoke with him today. Uh, we have not re received the response, you know, when or if they're going to do the test and all mm -hmm. that. But I know that's in forward motion as far as to find out what's going on with 151. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Will? <clears throat> Will Gallion, 74 H foot. Um, as I sit here tonight, um, I was pleased to see Sewer and Water and our town selectmen um, here um, on the Exxon Mobil issue, and I was going to commend them for their commitment and uh, passion that they're bringing to the fight against Exxon and ask them to bring that same commitment and passion to Casella. They're not here now. Yes, Some are. Yes, yes, I am. Oh, there you are. Okay. And, this, and thank, I, thank you, I, sir. And I appreciate. I appreciate you correcting me because I, I did think that Casella was, and their, and their engineer was spending more time here with you people than they are. And again, I'm very frustrated. I don't mean to take it out on you. That's all right. Um, I was at the planning board for 16 years. I've had that. That's <laughs> that's, that, that's not even that's nothing. Great. But, uh, I think, I think, the the board of selectmen is is. Matt and the, and the rest of the Board of Health know, we, they're, they're in the lead on this because it's in, it's in their wheelhouse. Um, we have told them whatever they need from us, whatever kind of backing, whether it's council, whether it's more engineering, whether it's, you know, some specialty uh, thing, we're, we're willing to help them out any way, shape, or form. All I'm asking for is what you were asking the townspeople for is to come out and show your support. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see you come out and show your support for my neighbors and myself. Because, uh, I mean, this is the first time that I've seen the selectmen here on a Casella issue. And I really feel like, don't take it the wrong way, but you're only here for the Exxon issue. 
Well, but you well, stayed, so I, I'll amend that yeah, and but, say but that you're I'm, here for Casella. Well, I, I'd like to point out, um, I, I don't think that's quite accurate what you're saying. Um, because when we had this first uh, hit, was it November 22nd or something, when we had the presentation, Casella was here when we were in this room, uh -huh. we had all the representatives here. Selectmen were here, town administrator were here. They were all here. I okay. know some of the you know, uh, daily meetings or the, the weekly meetings. And again, I'm just happen. asking for them to bring that same passion yeah. that I saw at the table here mm -hmm. against, that they have for Exxon Mobil against Casella yeah. because it's, it's the same issue. Yes. Smaller scale, I realize that, mm -hmm. but the... I, I, don't, I don't think it's the scale. I think that, and I'm, it's difficult for uh, anybody that has had a water problem. You know, I know how I would feel. You know, that I didn't do anything and I and now I have a problem because one of my corporate neighbors has been less than a, a, a fine steward of the environment. Um, usually in things like this, okay, uh, the and the only reason the Board of Selectmen involved, was involved with Mobile Exxon is because there's infrastructure problems that have to take place with the water and sewer. We have the same in, in infrastructure the, problems. Which, which I know that they're, they're working on, okay? And I'm not making any excuses nope. for anybody, but in the, you know, the time frame that, that, that you people have had the problem, you're doing, you're doing exactly the right thing. You're keeping it in front of everybody, you're making a lot of noise about it, and that's what you have to do, okay? Because that, that didn't happen with Mobile Exxon for a no. long, long, long time, okay? Um, and, you know, like I said, the Board of Selectmen, the Town Administrator, it, the Board of Health, everybody's, you know, we're willing to help in. We'll, and that's we'll exactly what I'm looking for. We'll make as much noise as we have to make. I'm looking for that same commitment and passion. No, and you're on TV, and everybody tonight is in here and talks. It's going to be on TV. You turn it on, everybody in town's going to see this. Oh, I realize that. Well, we here's the other thing. Now, uh, Water sewer, Joe, right? Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm glad that he Sorry, came we back. Were out in the hallway That's great. I'm glad you came back because I do have a question for Water and Sewer if, if it's all right. Yeah, and you may not know, but uh, the, the other gentleman's Alex. Was it McKenzie? Is yes. It? Yeah, and Alex as well is on the Water and Sewer Commission. So. Cause the and this, other ones maybe here. this isn't in your wheelhouse, but do you have an estimate of per foot, per mile, or what it costs to lay water lines? And I'm looking, I'm not going to hold you to anything. I'm just looking for an estimate. Uh, the, the best answer I could give you is that we could get you an estimate. Okay. Um, because, uh, and I don't want to bring it back to ExxonMobil, but if you noticed when, when Exxon was going to do piping in the town, they actually had Kleinfeld to go out and drill. They need to know where all the ledge is sure. and everything else. And the price is going to vary considerably based on um, topology. Right. But what we do know is that at the landfill, there is Southbridge Town water. Oh, I know that very well. So I'm sure Southbridge can give us a, an idea of the topology and the land, you know, whether there's a lot of ledge up there or not, and then we can come up with a, a rough estimate per foot of what it Is that be. something that I can ask for to you to provide to the Board of Health? Sure. Be happy to. We'll give us a couple of weeks because it's. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I was going to stick by the, the next meeting, which probably is a month away. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you're asking, Will, as far as trying to find out a linear foot because it's, you know, like he said, Kleinfelder went out and they drilled holes, and, I mean, they, they spent... The I, I'm just looking for an estimate. I mean, well, it's really, with, if, if I may... Sure. It's really hard to pin down a capital expense like that until the test borings are done mm -hmm. in a particular area where it's planned to go in, especially when there's no... I don't think there's any utilities in there. There's quarter. nothing up there now, there's, I don't believe. No, so. It's not like there's gas or sewer up there, so there's no past well, history. This, there's gas lines that run through the area. The big ones. Yeah, the big ones run through right. there because we're right by I Millennium mean, right Power. Away the road. Right. And that's uh, where they need to be doing the test. Correct. So, uh, well, if you may, uh, Mr. Coleman, didn't you hear a number at one time what it may cost for that? Did you mention a number to us at one time? Yeah, I mean, again, there was a number of $5 million that was thrown out to do the loop. But, again, I don't know where that number came from in terms of, you know, best guess estimate. I mm -hmm. don't know. Does that help you, Will? Well, I'm sure that, that was an estimate I heard. I, I was looking for something more accurate from the professionals that well, deal with you, sewer you, and you water. You usually count on somewhere in the ballpark of 100 to 200 dollars a foot, mm -hmm. depending on what the test borings uh, bring you to or what utilities are in conflict in that corridor. Okay. But that's just a rough. And that's all I was looking for was a, was a rough estimate. I mean, we, I'm sure we'll 
some of you read the article in the TNG that Casella has approached the Southbridge uh, sewer and water to get an estimate. And I just, right. I want someone that, to basically, when they come back and say, well, it's gonna be this much, to say, is it really that much? Or are they just inflating the cost? Because we all know that it's gonna come down to dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. But as the Board of Health, you know that the health and welfare of your residents is priceless. That's right. Okay, so um, thanks for hearing me. Yeah. Thanks, Will. <clears throat> Are there any more uh, questions or concerns regarding the uh, the H Foot Road water, sir? Please state your name. John Mahan. I live at 54 H Foot Road, and I received this memorandum from Sanborn and Head, and they had asked if they could put in the transducer in my well. And I find it kind of ironic that you know, they're looking to us to help them, but yet when Chief Coleman asked for water on his behalf for his family, the seller was completely against it, saying, no, we're not going to do that. But yet, if you look on the last page, I don't know if anybody has these, but it shows a bunch of different times that they need me at home between six and eight hours. I have to take out of my time to help them out. And they, in return, can't provide water to people who are asking for it. So I would just like to uh, make that note. And until I hear otherwise, I'm just going to um, deny them access to my well. Yeah, and, and that's fine. And I believe you will have received that with a letter from this board as well, endorsing that. Yes. Um, that came on the table. We talked about that at our last meeting. Um, basically, the transducer is going to provide a lot of data and a lot of information to try to help find groundwater flow and a lot of the information that they, they need, um, usage of the water and, and all that. Um, based on that information, um, you know, the board felt that, yeah, in fact, it would be uh, it would be helpful to have that information. There's no slam dunks with it. This information is at, at best guess. It, it says what it does, but it, there's no, it's not going to define anything permanently, but it's, it's the best you can come up with. My thing with that uh, whole thing was uh, I wanted to make it crystal clear that it was a voluntary program and that nobody was mandated to do that. And I think if you see in the very first line, it, it talks about a voluntary program. And I just wanted to, uh, to, to make you aware of that. If, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Um, but I do think that the data would be helpful for the cause as a whole. Well, I and, understand and, that. And, and so. I just find it, um, you know, here's a, a gentleman looking for water for his family, and Casella, a multi-million dollar company, can't provide water, but yet when they want me to take time off of work to be here <laughs> to help them out, to supposedly help them find where the water's going. You know, they're gonna I, I agree with you, and uh, I, I was a, a big uh, influence in, in trying to get bottled water. Uh, it's for 120 days. After that, then what? I mean, I, it, it's a big deal. Absolutely, I pushed very hard. Mr. Coleman was at those meetings when I basically begged, said, "Can you do it?" He's, you know, please. There's, this hits all around you. It's right. you know we need to get this guy water, and it was a, it was a flat denial. So I, I'm agreeing with what you're saying. Um, high hands are tied with that. Uh, I don't like it at all, um, but there's not much we can do about it. And again, uh, as far as the, the transponder, um, the it's a voluntary program. If you don't feel comfortable, it's that's fine. It's not a problem. Yeah. You know. okay. Nelly, go ahead. Can I say this? I'm agreeing with the fact of what you're saying about the water. I'm disagreeing about the fact that you say as far as allowing access. You've got a right to do what you want. Right. The more you work with them, the more we figure the flow of the water, the quicker we're going to get answers. The quicker we get answers, the quicker something may take place. Otherwise, this, this is just by not allowing access, I think, my opinion, I think the boards is in, which is the reason we endorsed that letter, is you're going to stretch it all out. And you're never going to get answers. And instead of a year, it might be five or six years. So our suggestion to, to everybody in this audience, if, if you can allow them access and you have the time and everything, work with them all you can. I, we truly believe that. And that's the reason. In the long run, it's going to benefit you guys. And if you don't, it's not. I agree. Mr. Coleman should have got it at water maybe. But that's a totally different. You can't compare one to the other and use one against the other because it's not going to help your cause. I, mean, I just feel that it's. 
you know, one hand washes the other, and if they'd like to be good neighbors, and they'd like me to be a good neighbor in return, yeah, show a little compassion for mm -hmm. another family. Mm -hmm. Th thank you for that point. Are there any other uh, comments that somebody would like to make on the H Fort Water discussion, sir? What I don't understand is that now I, I know that I've said this before, and I'll say it again. In 2012, I asked them about the contamination, and they did a study. Now, the study said the groundwater flow was going in this, these directions. <coughs> This was 2012. Nobody can hear you. You come up here, please. You just, like. In 2012, I said something about the contamination. And they, so the DEP commissioned a study. Casella <coughs> paid for it. Casella chose tie and bond. They did a five year study and they said which way the groundwater is flowing. So, what I don't understand is why do they have to study it once again? We're talking in 2012, that's three years ago now, and they did a five-year study, so we're talking eight years they've had this. They know which way the water is going, so I don't get why they have to study it once more. Talk about dragging your feet. Um, yeah, and, you know, I don't, I don't have that answer. I, I'm um, just finding it amazing. You, you live on Pleasant Street, was it? No, I don't live on Pleasant oh, Street. I'm, I live in Southbridge. In Southbridge. Yeah. And, and I don't know, I don't have that answer. Maybe at that time that study was on that side, Southbridge. But I do know that the studying that they're doing now is specific to the current contamination. And, and again, the 2012, I, I was not a part of that. You know, so I don't know where, where they did those studies. And obviously, it's the same consultant doing the work, Sam Bowen Head, so it's, you know, I, I don't know. Well, I, the study that they did then, they said the water, groundwater is flowing both east and West. I don't see how it could be any different today than it was then, unless today they're just looking for, you know, their own answer, the answer that they want, is what it looks like to me. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Are there any more uh, comments or concerns uh, regarding this H. Fort Road water discussion? Uh, if not, uh, I think the Board of Health will move on then to our next, uh, our next topic. Um, hearing no other comments, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming in um, regarding this. If, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments um, during the week, feel free to call the Charlton Board of Health and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And uh, as any new information unfolds, uh, we'll, we'll let everybody know. So thank you all for coming. Thank you. Flint Road, town of Charlton Landfill. Um, what does it mean? What is it? Gentlemen, I'm sorry, I couldn't be here. That's okay. I've been taking the time. PCE is tetrachloroethylene. Oh, is that? Which is dry cleaning fluid. Okay. Trichloroethylene is okay. more. Dry cleaning fluid, that's what we want to Dry cleaning fluid. Huh? Dry cleaning fluid. It's a chlorinated solvent. Sorry about that. Thanks, it's, it's a chlorinated if solvent. It's also um, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Primary use dry cleaning fluid. Talk to him. He's your guy. Okay. I'm, I'm on the board of health. Are you guys still in open session, okay. session, or are you recess? I don't know. I think we're going to be saying that we're in open session. Okay. We just haven't moved. We're staying here. Chairs are back, more comfortable. Yeah. They want to sharing yourself. You guys don't. You still don't agree with me sharing him, right? <laughs> I don't think we can. Okay. Yeah. I just want to know. So, thank so you. what do you I want to talk about? When I came, do you guys need me for anything? Gary, okay, I think we're good. Okay. Yeah, thank you for this coming. Was, this was good. Yeah. You still read this, the, whatever. This was actually. I read result. the bullet points, talked about it. Okay. Um, I have a couple of comments for you. Um, if I could just give them to you now, then. Absolutely. So there was some some confusion. I believe 149 Berry Corner Road came back with a J detect. That may be their third. She was here, and she just said that they just resampled last week. Yeah. In other words, what does this mean? 148 had a J channel, and what's a confusion? Does There's it a mean confusion. it doesn't? Um, so here's the problem. I think Tie and Bond has mislabeled 
148 versus 149 in the report and or in some of the documents. So one of them does have a J chance? J There's J hits in both. Yeah. And there's one J hits in both. And one of them has, if you look at the data table, there's three, but it's not three. It's one, and then it's a duplicate of that. Okay. And then it's the next one. So if, if I look at it's all right. the validated J hits, is 148 listed in there? Yeah. It yeah, is. see, it's a question. Yeah, 148 or 140, I don't know. Okay. I was on the phone with Tracy. Mm -hmm. She looked at one place, says, and, and I apologize, the lady's name is Mrs. Um, but at least one of them or both of them has them. Well, the lady who lives at the house, I talked to her. She called the board of health last week. I talked to her. I followed up right away with Tracy to find out what's going on with this. Is it, is it correct? Is it 148 or 149? Tracy's got that homeowner, that resident, that name listed under as 148 and 149 in two different places. Okay. I sent an email off tonight to get clarification on that. Okay, so that's really a typo. It's a typo, but I want to make sure the data's right. Yeah, so do we. Because mm. it could be three. So at the end of the day, Was 149 Barry Corner Road would like to get situated so she's clear as to what I, is. I specifically asked for clarification on the 148, 149, and resubmittal of the document or clarification back to the board as to what's going okay. on. Okay, so you're on it. I'm on that one. The next one is, um, do we have the data for 33 Ayers Road? I think we do. And if we could, at some point, if we could get that clarified. I can get that for you tomorrow. We might have it. Okay. What's the deal we on have that? it or I know it's been tested. I know it's been tested. Yeah. I don't know What's the deal on that? Just curious. She was just mentioning it. Who was she, that lady? No, Linda. Oh. Why would she say about 33 years? Because she said that they thought they had some concerns over that. 33 years had concerns. DEP mandated that it be tested. It was. I believe it's already been tested. I don't think I've seen the data. That could mean it came back non detect and it's in the data tables. That's got to be one of the closest, closest ones, no? I would say. Yeah, it's very close. It's very close. It's as close as it gets. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I can I can try to answer that for you. Um, okay, Gary, thank you for coming. You're welcome. Have a good evening, gentlemen. Okay. Thank you. You, you don't have to leave. You don't have to stay. It's up to you. Do what, do what you want to do. Um, moving on, though, <laughs> we'd like to talk yeah, about the Flint Road <laughs> landfill. Um, as you guys know, uh, DEP has mandated that we do certain things for the Flint Road landfill um, basically uh, we have to put it out for bid to do some uh, monitoring and some um, annual upkeep on it uh, we got three prices um, going forward with that the actual dollar values on those prices are with mr. Philbrook right now and we do not have them so I'd like to table that till our next board of health meeting and uh, we'll open up the uh, the three prices to see if uh, we can uh, award that to somebody and get going on that. Very good. Very okay. Good. Moving right along. Um, both uh, Jim Malley and uh, Mr. Philbrook are not here tonight, so we uh, we don't have any title fives. Uh, I spoke with Jim Philbrook today. Um, the office is up and running fine. Um, a new uh, team member, Emily, she's doing very well. Uh, talked to Andrea about it. Seems like everything's going well, so happy about that. Um, I believe that's all we have. Everything else, we're in good shape. The only thing we're missing is Jim Malley Title V reports, and he's not here. Yeah, and some other people have been asking me, it's such a nice summer. Uh, winter, they wanted to know if they'd open up uh, for putting in septics. Mm -hmm. I said I'd find out tonight from Jim, but Jim didn't come in. Well, I'd say the frost is out of the ground. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be good to go. Why don't we direct Jim to open them up? What a boy! Right. I mean, there's twenty right? yeah. different people ask me if they could put it in. I said I'd check with Jim tonight. There's no frost in the ground at all. No, no, I make a no. motion that we direct Jim to open up oh, the season to do yeah. septic. They can get started earlier. I mean, another week. I second it. 
Somebody, you. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, Andrew, can you reach out to Jim Malley and let him know the board wants a septic system season to begin? He proposed it. He seconded it. All in favor? Unanimous. Unanimous. If he has yeah, any problems, we'll tell him Because the, the weather has been so nice and people are... <clears throat> the contractors want to get going, you know? Yeah, it's a real yeah. nice... Oh, yeah. There's no frost. In the there's no room. frost. If there is, there's not going to be enough to mow the tower. Trust me, there's no frost. I've been out in it. And, uh, did, and you know uh, Jim Tobuk's wife was very sick. She's doing very well. Yeah. I found out. Okay. That being said, you look well, you got a, uh, Did you get a card we're all going to sign yes, it's in, the in the other room? Oh, we got stuff to sign there. She said, so don't go we'll there. I already, signed, I already signed most of them, right? Just, hey. No. All right, so you don't want to adjourn. You'd like to uh, Just recess say to go. We're not going to adjourn to recess. Yeah, to go over there and okay. sign so paper that needs uh, work. Uh, at this we point, somebody else in the audience. do you guys have anything for this board? Uh, not really. Uh, we'll resident it or we'll look at it. I was wondering if you have an immediate regards to permit for, I guess, the heating system, or to change the oil for propane gas or something like that. that effect, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not that familiar with it. It's, that's under the fire department. Yeah. It's under the fire department? I thought it was yeah. Uh, I don't think that's with this board, no. No. Okay. no. I know it's like it might be a plumbing department, too. Yeah. Boilers are the fire department. Boilers are. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. No okay. Thanks for coming. Plus, it's gas fired. <laughs> hey, is your boiler gas fired? Is it gas fired? If it's propane, it's the plumber. If it's oil, it's 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 the fire. I mean, I'm just a resident of Chelsea. I live in South Chelsea. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hmm. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so at this point, the uh, we're going to uh, relocate from this room to our uh, board of health room um, to sign uh, the, the paperwork that we need and for adjournment. Thank you.